I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Director Greg Utanis, who has been pretty much all over the season in the last 12 months or working on House of the Dragon and on FX as the old man. Greg, first of all, you served as co-executive producer on House of the Dragon and directed three episodes. Before we go into specifics on your work, um, talk us through your role in fleshing out um, I guess, the characters and the world of this amazing uh, sequel, House of the Dragon? You know, the, it, was, it was a great culture of collaboration. You know, Miguel uh, was someone that I brought into television, out of film, onto House, and Miguel brought me onto the adventure of doing House of the Dragon. And there, I'd flirted with doing the original show a couple of times, it just schedule-wise could never make it work. So yeah. there was a real dialogue and and sharing of imagery and ideas and and with Gita and Claire and Miguel and myself. And so the engagement of everybody, what was so incredible was like the best ideas kind of start, like the disruption starts small and the execution is where it needs to go out into the world and become real. So it was some of the most exciting time was the six months ahead of before we were all kind of landing in London together. Yeah. Was it true that you pretty much mentored or um, kind of brought, brought Miguel Sopochnik into this industry or is that just my imagination? Miguel, I mean, Miguel was already in the industry in terms of storyboarding and had directed a film called Repo Men, which was yeah. written by one of the writers on House. And so Repo Men didn't perform and Miguel was in movie jail and was like looking for an outlet and Garrett Lerner, who who was one of the writers on Repo Men, came and said, you know, would is it possible that my friend Miguel could come shadow you on house? And mm -hmm. besides that we became fast friends, like it was clear that this was a medium that 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 like worked for him. And so after, I don't even think he was done shadowing me halfway through an episode before I gave him an episode to do. Like it was so clear that he had such talent and then when he executed it he really became as much the go-to director of house as I, as I was at the time and so and and the similarities in the way we worked because of the the you know what I was able to to kind of offer really sort of set us up for success in terms of being able to collaborate on something of a grand scale we you know would talk about the way like Spielberg and Lucas collaborated on um indiana jones and and wanted similar collaboration and we actually went down the road with ryan condal on conan you know because they, they were going to reboot conan the barbarian and then you know that that became a real you know kind of tone deaf project to the me too uh movement and no one wanted to see you know conan the barbarian in the middle of that so that went away but it was actually really brilliant uh project that didn't get off the ground there was and a lot of it can be found now in House of the Dragon. Yeah, I'm really, I'd love to have seen that actually, to be honest, just uh, just out of curiosity. Um, it's interesting also that you speak about House, um, you worked obviously on that show, you won an Emmy for that for season, uh, an episode of season four called House's Head. Um, it reminds me back then, it wasn't that long ago, but it kind of feels like decades ago. Um, there was such amazing material on network TV. And although network TV still has some wonderful shows, a lot of that, a lot of the creativity has moved to cable and streaming. Um, I, I remember you beat, well, you triumphed over Boston Legal, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, and I think Damages, which you've worked on as well. Um, do you remember much from that night when you won that Emmy? Yeah, it was, you know, I, I, you know, it was funny, I got the, the two, three months between nomination and the awards was actually the most interesting because um, I was, I was actually surprised that how many people come up and, and, and come up to you and say, like, do you think you're going to win? Like, it was, and actually, you know, I, I, my response was like, you know what, I'm, I'm winning till I'm not. Like, yeah. I, I, I just was so excited by it and even that night um my boy's mom and I went to it and she was still uh nursing you know my son was supposed his due date was in the middle of uh the shoot yeah and he ended up he ended up arriving two weeks late and he like I turned in my director's cut and Van was born so you know 14 right. and a half yeah, you said ago. that during your speech I think yes yeah 
Yeah, I did. I think it was, it was, it was the, the only reason I was there and I got that episode done was because he, you know, he, he was a couple of weeks late. And so he actually, when I went to London, he actually has, uh, has Miami in his, in his, uh, in his bedroom at his mom's house. And, um, you know, that, that night was like, I, I would compare it to like when you see those scenes when somebody's been in like a horrible accident and you just kind of have flashes. Like you're you're like you see the paramedics and then you see like the the lights of the hospital corridor and then somebody's operating on you. It was like when from when they called my name, it just like I I just wasn't in my body and and spoke from my heart and it was you know it was an incredible it was incredible. Like I didn't you know and then there was. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. So I went back to my seat and then I went to the restroom and ran to Carlton Cuse, who was like, dude, where's your trophy? I'm like, I, I like, I don't know. Like, where do I get it? He's like, he's like, you gotta go get your trophy. Like, I'm like, well, nobody told me where to go. And so <laughs> I was like, I mean, I was absolutely bewildered. Like, and I, I didn't really, you know, my feet didn't touch the ground for another week at least. Yeah. And I hear that from a lot of people you're nominated and you ride that great journey. It doesn't matter if you win or not. This is all gravy. But as soon as your bum hits that seat in the auditorium, nothing else matters and you need to win that award. So that's what I keep hearing. Well, I remember it was funny when we, when we got there, it was, uh, and actually Alan Taylor, who's, who's going on to season two, uh, was, was nominated for the Mad Men pilot. And he, my, as we were getting there, my, my, uh, my boy's mom said like, you know, they, they put, they kind of, they know the winners, they put them in the aisles, so they don't have to kind of climb over everybody if they win. And so we were smack in the middle of yeah. like the orchestra section as deep in as you could possibly get. And Alan was on the edge um, because Mad Men won everything except that, that year. Yeah. And so, but you know, it, it was, it genuinely like I was going to, you know, we were taking selfies, we were just milking the night because it was like everybody, even the trades came out to kind of say I had no chance. Like they were just yeah. like, it's Mad Men's year. Like, what is this house episode? Like, Greg Etienne has no chance. And so I, it, it was, you know, it was it was great and it was fun. And it's it was, you know, extremely, extremely members, especially, you know, giving years to episodic television. You know, I really connect with being, you know, episodic television has not been a, a stopping point on the way to do something else that I want to do. Like, I yeah. love the medium. I love, yeah. like, I, I watch television. <laughs> I love making it. I get to do the thing I love. So I, I, I've, I, you know, I remember really embracing where I was in my life and what my career was right before actually I made that episode. Yeah. And you've done so much amazing episodic television, like Lost and Prison Break and Heroes and Banshee, Grey's Anatomy, House of the Dragon, obviously. Um, I think that, yeah, damages I said. So let's talk about House of the Dragon because um, the dance of the dragons is what everybody was talking about at the end or when uh, the Black Queen premiered the season finale such incredible episode so much to talk about but I, I know that you've spent some time talking about how you conceptualized the the um you know the battle between Vagar and Arix the two dragons and I'm just going to leave it to you now to explain and did it did it turn out the way that you hoped because it's it's such a beautiful scene oh thank you thank you it came out exactly as I you know it's funny I, I was actually just giving a talk at USC, uh, which is where I went to school and from 88 to 92 um, about virtual production. And, you know, in that talk, I finished the talk with a video of the dragon fight, sort of similar to what was on HBO, but it was, it was the dragon fight cut to my iPhone recordings yeah. of us playing with our toys and really talking through the sequence as we were imagining it a year and a half almost nearly two years before the final version aired and it was I was really surprised and, and delighted that it came out as well as it did and to the to the specifications like the amount of work that went into that um I had done a miniseries about 20 years ago exactly 20 years ago uh Children of Dune which was a great reference point for how to work and workflow for House of the Dragon and not dissimilar to that it just you know, really began with two grown two grown men playing with their toys. So <laughs> I had these action figures of the these dragons from Harry Potter that I used, and we would like with my iPhone kind of shoot the blocking or at least talk through the blocking because I felt that traditional storyboards weren't going to allow me to create something that needed to be dynamic and moving, and then virtual production coming into play, being able to really find shots and, and move along with the dragon as though I was on a 
dragon camera you know like i was i was i was flying along within the chase and to be able to have those tools which were not previously available years ago was incredible to wield and what i what i love most about it as well is that it's done the sequence takes place in very heavy rain and fog which amplifies the tension and i i suppose i haven't read the book but i suppose some of that comes from the book and how it was storyboarded in the scripts and so forth but because Vega suddenly appears over Arix, it's so shocking and actually terrifying. And that takes a lot to actually, we've seen everything audiences. We're very savvy these days, but I had not seen that before. And I'm just wondering if you were going for something that was going to shock and terrify the audience and give us something new. And then what was your reaction to seeing the feedback and how positive it was and how people were just so, um, just so floored by, the you know Eric's being mangled and chewed out and it was just very hard to watch I was at my dermatologist yesterday who who like high-fived me when I it was actually one of the 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 the, the uh nurse practitioners like high-fived me when I came in and she was like oh my god I was crying I couldn't believe it like that finale like I like that that kind of feedback is the best when somebody has just like watched it organically that doesn't know you that just loves the the show and the series and the franchise and everything but that that moment specifically with Vagar was a shot that I had in my head for a long time we were mocking it up on the phone it was the single shot that I worked on the most in fact I I asked Angus and and afterwards just to get a file of of that moment so I could eventually blow up and make a frame of that particular thing because it's like I'm not someone who likes to collect props from the things I work on because I worked on them and that's the thing that's better than yeah. any object I think if I wanted anything I'd want Krabby's mask and hammer but um the you know that was an image that represents so much of the work on the show in fact you know Jim Clay um gave me one of his whose production designer gave me one of his watercolor paintings because I, I loved his watercolor work and he gave me one of Storm's End, you know, from that sequence, because it was, it was that there, there is talk of the storm in the book, Storm's End, you know, the name itself, yeah. you know, lends, lends to what the setting is going to be and using the fog and using the darkness and using the lightning to our advantage. And then the added thing I was really excited about was the idea. And I always remember this when I was, when I'm in a plane and we're in turbulence or a storm that we go above the clouds. And I love the idea that, the final moment would be so beautiful and such a relief. And while you were catching your breath in that moment comes this, you know, moment of horror. And, and, the, and the goal was to really try to be just half a beat ahead of the audience, anticipating what the next that's right mom, moment was going to be. So, and that's what got me because as I said, like, you know, I feel like it takes a lot now to surprise me. You know, we've seen, every, I feel like I've seen it all, but um, on this show, it just, you just kept surprising me. And what I also, thought was so wonderful and that's you know the whole team but I think a lot of the credit will must go to you as director is it becomes a fight between these two beasts the two men boys whatever you want to call them they eventually realize that it's got really nothing to do with them anymore because Prince Amon screams Vega no and this giant beast destroys Arix anyway. And it reminds me that men can't control dragons. You know, King Viserys says it early on in the season, they're too big for that world and they will always be their undoing. And I'm wondering if that, a, a lot of that intention was behind the way that you blocked and shot the scene. That was definitely, in the, you, first of all, you're hundred percent right. I mean, that was that was the exact callback to the first episode, you know, where 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 he tells where Viserys tells Renera that, that that it's an illusion that men control dragons, and the it was it was you know, it, there wasn't a lot of specific staging in the script as much as intent of what was going on, and right. that the, that the boys, which essentially they are the young men, lose control of the dragons, and that it becomes really dragon to dragon, you know, fight for survival and 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 for. That. I mean, you know, we, I added some touches that, you know, that, that, that Arex, you know, uh, shoots fire into the same eye that, of Vagar that, 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 um, that Eamon had lost. Yeah. And, you know, there's little, there's little details like that. Um, but it was, you know, it was, it was important that this, that, you know, a, 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 for me, that something equally as terrifying is that we 
are are there and entertaining that it that there's something that is like thrilling and you're on the edge of your seat and that I was at all times especially in the finale really making the fanboy experience I wanted to have all the way I mean there's the scene on the side of the mountain that I really love Renera's coronation I mean you have them you know you, you have a funeral pyre that turns into you know, an impromptu coronation and there was nothing more get you know you're on the, we're literally shooting on the side of a mountain that we helicoptered everything into so there's nothing more game of thrones or thronesy as 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 the word that uh, got thrown around a lot for two years uh than than a moment like that it's true and i tell you what greg the scene that still sticks with me is actually the final shot when damon reveals to rhaenyra that her son Viserys has died and that look you don't you don't hear what he's saying you just see her reaction and i know of any of us who are parents who hear that kind of news you'd probably be devastated you'd fall to the ground but she is so resolute and it's like okay we're on now this is going to get ugly i love yeah. it like it's seed onto my retina so talk me through why you decided to do it that way you know the we we had the idea you know, originally that scene was was scripted to be in the throne room of Dragonstone. It was really going to take us into the throne room of Dragonstone for the first time since the original series, which I which I loved and was very attached to. And there was there was really not a solution going forward that we could that made sense that we could afford. We we thought about it in terms of virtual production. So we decided to to leave it in the the um you know the 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 council chamber room th uh, space. Um, the scene is the shot is actually twice as long as what aired. It, it really began with um, Damon getting getting the news, and then following Damon as you're watching him process this, his expression and changing, and then it. So it was, and I, I am fundamentally as a director really against doing anything that is highly technical with some mixed with something highly emotional, which I find you know, I, I, it is just usually a recipe for for not getting one or not getting the other. Um, but we decided to roll the dice. We spent the entire day on that shot, which actually was two shots that were strung, that were connected. And you have a little bit of that, um, there. So the idea that it would, you know, kind of be on steady cam and the idea that it would then eventually become a crane that would just keep kind of closing in was an idea that I had from the moment I read that script. That was actually why I wanted to direct 10 was for that final moment. It's so good. Um, you also directed, and by the way, and and Emma, like just you talk about sticking the landing, and we actually were going to stop one take before that, and you know Pepe was like, he's like, I think we can just get it better, and I'm like, and I went up to Emma, and I'm like, I I think because I had I had the performance, and that trumps for me the technical, and I went to Emma, I'm like, do you got one more in you, and she's like, I'm about ready to dry out, and and I said if you if you got one more. Like let's try it. If, if there's nothing there, and in the, in, then there's nothing there, and that's and there was the last take that wanted. Really? To sure. Yeah, that's the last take. She she like it 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 went knowing that was the end. Like for whatever it was, it just all came together. So I think there's also something to be said for for pushing because there was no risk because we had something that I was as happy with, but it, we exceeded all of our expectations with that final moment. And actually, it was it was actually a great. You know the, the 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 collaborative process that you have with your cast because I love watching great actors work and work together and solve problems and we spent a lot of time on on how we would you know, there was something about I love backing you know which is like I like I love when the actors have their back to camera and are and are delivering something and you and you can endow what yeah. what is what is there and what is going on and it was, you know, Matt's contribution of like leading her away from the table versus giving the news at the table. Um, that was like the, 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 the magic sauce that we needed just to kind of tip over. Like we were working through some ideas and we tried out a few things just as we were rehearsing it. And, and, and we started with that portion of the shot because that was the harder work because it had to, you know, it's a, it, if you could have seen that space and the way the crane was like you've got to time it was bananas to like get it to technically work let alone like have such a fully realized performance but the idea that she was being taken away and actually it was from an earlier take that she kind of stumbled that we worked that I asked her if she could work back in for that final shot because that 
that like almost her legs giving out and just watching kind of the shoulders hunched over and then just see that it's that switch is flipping and that war is in her eyes is actually the final line of the script yeah and that's the moment that we're all hanging on now for waiting for season two hurry up um yeah mate i congratulations on some great work you did three and four for the old man as well um and obviously three for house of the dragon i'm so looking forward to what you're doing next um and thank you for your time today mate appreciate it this is great rob thank you 